Um, I'm going to introduce the speakers one at a time, and they're going to talk about these steps that we're going to take to recover. And the first one um, is from Allen Construction, and he's the CEO. Uh, his name is Brian Henson, and he's going to talk about uh, what, what it's going to take to help get these homes rebuilt. Thanks, Abe. Um, so I've been giving about a workshop a week since um, December 20th, I think, is the first one that we did. I'm going to try to pare down everything that you'll want to hear about rebuilding from a two-hour workshop into 10 minutes. Um, but I'll be in the back for questions after. So after the T and Hayes Asita fires, we uh, helped about 60 people with their insurance settlements, averaging about a $150,000 increase. Um, and I think we, we had the privilege of rebuilding almost a quarter of the homes that were re rebuilt. Uh, prior to that, I worked for AIG, which is some consider the evil empire. Um, pre-2009, I guess. And uh, after AIG, I went to work for a disaster restoration company. And so I have this weird little niche of understanding every side of this rebuilding insurance process. And uh, what I would like to give tonight is a message of hope. Um, for those of you that have damage uh, or have lost your home, the, what you're looking at is a big unknown. And so I want to give a little bit of vocabulary um, and, a, and something of a roadmap for you to follow in the coming weeks and months ahead. Uh, I'm not going to be able to cover everything, uh, but I want to give you a sense that this is manageable, uh, that when you break it down into its parts, you're going to be able to get through this just fine. Um, it's going to be a hard, hard struggle. It's going to take a lot of work. Uh, and it's going to be your job for the next year uh, for most of you that, that are in that situation. But you can do it, and you can come out ahead. So um, from all the folks that we've been working with, and uh, if I had to boil it down to sort of three things, um, my top three would be first to be get informed. Uh, tonight's the first step on that path. Uh, learn how to become your own advocate. And I'll talk a little bit more about what that means in, in detail. And then uh, build your team and who should be on that team. So what I mean by getting informed is you have a contract with your insurance company. Um, you can't negotiate that contract unless you know what it says. So the insurance company is required to give you a copy of that within 30 days. It's part of the California Bill of Insurance Bill of Rights, Insured Bill of Rights that you have. And when you get it, um, it's something that no one has ever read unless they're in your situation. Uh, so now is the time to read it. And cover to cover, back and front, it's not going to make sense the first time or the fifth time. So read it a sixth time. Um, what I'm going to cover in just a minute is some of the breakdowns of how to think about it to give you some reference as you start to read through it. Um, So if you can think about your insurance policy as a series of buckets, and uh, your job moving forward is to fill up each bucket. That's how you can maximize your insurance payout. Um, so the main buckets are this. There's a coverage A, which is your house. Uh, there's a coverage B, which is everything that's a structure that's not your house or attached directly to your house. That's going to be your driveway, walkways, uh, a pool, spa, decks that aren't attached, pool house, uh, detached garage, anything that's not bolted directly to your house fence. You, some of you will have what's called extended coverage. So basically, that's usually a percentage, 25, 50, 100 percent, depending upon your policy. That's going to increase, typically, your coverage A limit should you need it. Um, you have contents, that's everything that was in your house. That's usually a big bucket to fill that can be tedious. Um, I'll come back to that in the Becoming Your Advocate on how to maximize that. You're going to have something called additional living expenses, which hopefully you and your insurance company have already been talking about. This is to cover your expenses while you're away. Some of your policies might say it's 12 months. You have 24 because it's de uh, declared disaster area. 
the, in, the number doesn't increase, you just have a longer time to be able to spend it. You have, so that's what shows up typically on the deck page. That's what's on the front called the declarations page. Uh, you have more than that in your policy, which is why you need to read it. So buried down deep are three more sections, code upgrades or other, otherwise known as ordinance and law. That's how you, you can meet today's code with uh, what might have been in your older house. It's, it's another bucket to fill. You have debris removal um, and you have trees and shrubs. Typically each one of those are either five or 10% of coverage A, sometimes of coverage B. Okay, so that was really boring and, and tedious, uh, but you'll see that when you go through and what I'm gonna recommend is that you, for those of you that are into spreadsheets, you build a spreadsheet and you start dropping in the dollars and the percentages and total it up because that's your maximum payout. Some people think um, that the insurance company is gonna cover whatever it costs to rebuild. Most of your policies are not written that way. Uh, they're written in a way that gives you a maximum amount. And so I want you to get that maximum amount, whatever it is, uh, written down on your policy. And that's the extent of my uh, insurance language. We've got the expert here. He's going to talk a little bit more and in getting in, into that area. But it, you've got to break it down that way and understand. And so I want to give you some guidance on how you fill those, up, how you fill those buckets up. You need to talk to your adjuster. They're your ally in the beginning until they're not. Um, but in most cases, adjusters are good people and they want to help. Most of them got into this business because they want to help people. It can be a very rewarding job. Most of their days are filled by getting yelled at. So uh, I always recommend people start by being really nice. And in most cases, you can hit policy limits uh, with some simple conversations that are intelligently guided with some backup um, on the construction expertise side to understand how uh, the language is used once you start getting into the estimating phase. Um, and you can get policy limits with very little effort, is my experience. The right effort at the right time, so start thinking of them as your ally, again, until they're not, and when they're not, there's various stages that you can get into, uh, but it gets harder and harder to get paid out once you start going down that road. Um, you're gonna need help, so I'm gonna come back to this a couple times. Um, even after you've read it the sixth time, it still might, might not make sense and you're gonna say, Brian, how can I possibly fill those buckets? I don't really even know what that means. I don't know what code upgrades are. I don't know uh, how to categorize my contents. Um, and that's where the work comes in. And the next sort of thing I wanna advocate is that you need to become your own advocate. So you kinda need to take charge of this situation because no one's gonna do it for you. Um, and the way that you can do that, aside from being informed, is uh, getting help with, uh, with this by bringing on and people to build your team. And so think of it, think of it this way. The, the whole insurance negotiation side is exactly that. It's a negotiation. It's not a black and white world here that you're entering into. It's very, very gray. Uh, you've suddenly been transported into Baja and every price is not the real price. When the estimate first comes back from the insurance company, every single one, every one I've been through several hundred, is not accurate. It's not really intended to be accurate. It's a first stab at it. And so um, when you're working with your adjuster through this process, know that what they're trying to say is the best information that they have and that they're wrong and that there's more, if you have not hit policy limits, that that's okay, you're gonna get there. Um, and if you keep that attitude um, and you stay positive about it and you keep them on your side, uh, again, advocating for yourself, never take no for an answer, you, you will get there. So um, I wanna give an example of this in your, in your additional living expenses section the most, almost every one of your policies has a line in there when you dig deep into page 15 or 16, whatever it is, uh, that says uh, the additional living expenses are for you to keep the same standard of living that you had. Uh, and so what that means is if there's, um, if you lived in a uh, five bedroom house and you had a pool and you had an ocean view, just throwing this out there. This is a lot of people in Ventura had this situation. Almost every house that burned in Ventura had an ocean view. 
Uh, you're not required to live 60 miles away from where your work is and have an hour long commute or more in a two bedroom place where uh, your family of six is now crammed in, in there. Uh, that's not the same standard of living. And so if you, some, of, some people I've talked to have had to sign leases or sign short term leases. It was the only thing you can get. Availability is a different story, but if there's something available that was very similar to your house, ignore, I'm recommending you ignore the price tag. It's, you don't need to worry about that. That's the insurance company's problem. And advocate for yourself that you need to have the same standard of living. Because what you need to be is very comfortable <laughs> through this process. And this is the, the thing that you need to solve first so you can get on to thinking about everything else. Uh, shelter always comes first in survival <laughs> after water. Uh, and so um, the thing to be careful of with that is the only, your only concern should be is not how much it's going to cost, just that you're not going to run out. And what we're ad recommending people be prepared for is an 18-month to 24-month process. And I know that's hard to hear. Um, but by the time insurance, comp insur insurance settlement is full, um, by the time your property is cleaned, by the time it's uh, been restored and rebuilt, depending upon how much structural damage you have, permitting happens, uh, and get through a rebuilding process that is heavily impacted. It was busy here before 600 homes in Ventura were lost and uh, another three or 400 here were affected. It was busy before then, it's gonna be busier. And so availability of, of workers might be a challenge to slow things down. And so be prepared for that 18 to 24 months. So when you're looking at your, that's the only thing to be concerned about with that bucket. When it comes to the contents, uh, when I mean, what I mean by advocate for yourself, as another example, is push to just give, have them give you the full amount. Start right there. They're gonna say, they're gonna give you a, a, a spiel that you should have to line item out everything. Um, and push right back to say, nope, we lost every, if you lost everything, if, you, if you're in that situation where everything is now damaged, mold, is covering everything if you had a foot or more, or six inches of more in your house of mud. Uh, everything is essentially a total loss in that sense. You can save things, you can clean things, uh, but you shouldn't have to go through the arduous effort of having to line item everything. So just right out of the gate, just give me the full amount. That's what it was there for, you lost everything. If you get to the, if you can't do that and they're really fighting you on it, um, and you have to go through a line item basis, um, think of it as uh, this way, um, carve out 40 hours over the next month, uh, 10 hours a week, and think of it as a really, really high paying job. Because uh, if you have three, most, most policies have somewhere between three, maybe high 200s to 600,000, kind of, I see th things in that range of contents coverage. And so that boils down to like $2,000 an hour, something like that, you know, somewhere in that range, depending on what they've already agreed on, I would take that job any day. So in some, it's, it's arduous, it's tedious, but if you can think of it in terms, reframe uh, the conversation in your head about how, how this is, advocate and, and go and, and think of it that way, you're, you're gonna come out way ahead. Don't give up on it. Um, I'd like to leave you with, um, one last point about building your team. Um, so the, the morning before we evacuated, I stayed up all night watching the glow of the fire uh, get closer and closer. And I knew we would have to leave in the morning because it was, it was, I had uh, some friends in Santa Rosa and, and, and heard horror stories about that fire moving so fast um, and people died because they did not leave. And so we weren't gonna take that chance. Um, so the night before, I had my kids, I have three little kids, and they packed up everything. Um, and it's really amazing when you tell a, uh, a nine-year-old to pack up the three most important things, what they grab. Um, and, uh, and so we had the car uh, packed and stayed up all night just watching it to make sure we didn't have to leave sooner. Uh, and we left in the morning, and as we drove away, the kids all waved to the house. Because uh, they, they were uh, of the belief that we might not come back to it. 
I'm, I'm, I'm sharing this because almost everybody nearby believed that it, it could have been them. And anybody who's in that situation really wants to help out. So, um, sorry, it's kind of hit me. I've been walking on ash and mud sites for uh, six weeks now. And, and uh, the way that we feel, uh, in the way that almost everybody that I talk to feels, um, architects, engineers, designers that are calling me, they're saying, hey, Brian, if you know anybody that needs help, we just want to help. Uh, and there's really great communities of uh, construction professionals pulling together to advocate for you uh, in the uh, local cities and counties that are primarily affected. So don't, don't be concerned or um, bashful about reaching out and asking for help. No one's going to charge you to have a conversation. Um, so call anybody that you know. Call your friends that may have built the project or remodeled the project. Uh, ask if they know somebody if you don't and uh, put together a team of individuals that can help you navigate this process. Um, you're gonna run out of vocabulary and you're gonna need their vocabulary. You're gonna run out of expertise and you're gonna need their expertise to help you. Um, the insurance company at some point is gonna start giving you estimates that are 40 to 60 pages long. And, and the only way to find out if they're accurate is to go line by line, page by page. Um, the policies, the fire policies that, mo that are kicking in to cover the debris flow were designed for fire. The debris uh, and cleanup portions of them were not designed to clean up a half an acre or an acre full of mud that's three feet. You're gonna run out. Uh, and so the other parts of the policies are going to have to kick in. It will be a challenge. It will be a challenge to keep the rebuilding for a lot of you within the bounds of what you're going to get. And there's resources out there. SBA has some loans. There's other ways to get potentially access to more money. Um, and if you're proceeding ahead with design um, too far ahead of costs, you might get yourself stuck in a position that's difficult. So we're, if you're talking with an architect, I, we're recommending bring in a contractor early. If you're contract, contacting with a builder, bring in the architect and engineer early so that they can help you assess the damage and know what the permitting side is. So the, 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 the fastest you can do that and get some advocates on your side, the better. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there and then uh, pass it off to some of the others. Thank you.